This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Unette Gentry. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. Today's news is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New service and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. It is Thursday, September 15th. Well, Nye County has now pressed charges on three Round Mountain residents connected to a fentanyl overdose. The Nye County Sheriff's Office report that they have arrested three individuals and have charged them with murder. On March 21, 2021, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies responded to 8 Prospect Avenue in Round Mountain in Nye County for a report of a non-responsive male. Upon arrival, police say that the male was already transported by medics and ultimately passed away. The male was identified as Riley Brasano. The cause of death was determined to be fentanyl overdose. Nye County Sheriff's Office detectives conducted an in-depth investigation and ultimately identified that Brasano had received narcotics laced with fentanyl. The investigation identified that Skylar Marich, 25 of Round Mountain, Ryan Tibbetts, who is 38 of Round Mountain, and Jimmy Nakidena, who is 30 of Round Mountain, all were involved in the distribution of their narcotics to Brasano. Arrest warrants were obtained and all three were arrested for murder and unauthorized acts relating to controlled substances. These individuals have been booked into the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. In other local news, a domestic dispute leads to a violent end with police taking the cusp suspect into custody after that person is tased. The Nye County Sheriff's Office has arrested a person by the name of Arturo Garcia. Garcia is facing charges of domestic battery with a deadly weapon, violating a temporary protection order, assault with a deadly weapon, possession to sell a Schedule 3, 4, and 5 controlled substance, as well as an additional charge of domestic battery with a deadly weapon and attempted murder with a deadly weapon. According to the declaration of arrest on September 12th, deputies were dispatched to Deanna Street for a report of a domestic battery with the use of a handgun. According to the reporting party, Garcia had pistol whipped the female with a gun prior to him fleeing in a white Honda sedan vehicle. Police say that they were unable to locate the vehicle at that time. The female told police that Garcia had hit her on her face near her lip and also the female showed police her injuries which included the right side of her face near her lip and that Garcia was accused of pistol whipping her. The reporting party said that her boyfriend, Arturo Garcia, accused her of cheating on him with someone at work and that he was believed to be under the influence of narcotics such as methamphetamine. Police say that they believe that Arturo was also possibly under the influence of alcohol and that he may have been hiding illegal narcotics inside the home. At that time, Garcia was located and taken into custody. Later on that day, the reporting party called back and said that Garcia had returned back to the residence after the previous domestic battery offense and that this individual was now stabbed by the suspect. Deputies searched the area and found Arturo hiding in a nearby area. At that time, he still had the knife with him and stabbed himself several times in the neck. Deputies urged Arturo to lower the knife from his neck area and when he did not comply, they tasered him. Both individuals were transported to Desert View Hospital for medical attention. This is not the first time Arturo Garcia has been arrested for domestic battery. He was taken into custody on July 23rd of this year at the same location for domestic battery in the first degree. And one person is taken by Front Valley Fire and Rescue Ground Ambulance to our local hospital following a crash. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies as well as Nevada Highway Patrol responded to a two-vehicle crash 
on Highway 160 between Mans and Cass Road. Upon arrival, they found both vehicles sustained major damage. Two people were reporting injuries at the time of the crash. One person was transported locally by ground ambulance to Desert View Hospital. The other one refused to be transported via ground ambulance at the time of the incident. Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating this crash. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and auxiliary Zora units directed traffic around the crash site as well as assisting in the crash scene investigation and cleanup. A road closure now to warn drivers about due to the heavy rains in the Tonopah area. The road department is closing the Gabs Pole Line Road because it is impassable. This will remain in effect over this weekend. Signage will be placed to notify all drivers. And stay tuned. News 25 will return after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Lisa Spahitz and Mike Plasmeyer at Country Financial Insurance. Auto, home, life, and commercial. 775-727-8920. Well, according to the Nevada Department of Employment, Training and Rehabilitation's August 2022 economic report, Nevada lost 600 jobs over the month, pulling back slightly from the larger employment gains seen in recent months. Employment remains at 11,600 jobs higher than before the pandemic and is up 70,300 since August of 2021, an annual increase of 5.1%. The total employment level in the state? 1,461,200. The state's unemployment rate in August is 4.4% unchanged from July and down 1.6 percentage points when compared to August of 2021. And employment in Nevada saw a slight dip in August 2022, seeing a decrease of about 600 jobs over the month after seasonal adjustment. The seasonally adjusted unemployment rate stayed at 4.4% due to rounding. And despite the slight decrease in jobs throughout Nevada, most sectors in the state will still be at or above their pre-pandemic peak in employment. Manufacturing, for example, is at 112% of its pre-pandemic peak, which is a percent higher than what we observed in July. Well, while temperatures now are a bit fall-like, it was a hot start for students in the Nye County School District. That spurred a renewed effort to get air conditioning on local school buses, especially in Amargosa Valley. Students there can spend up to an hour on the bus in what can be a very hot condition. And that had some parents concerned about the safety of their children and pushing for change. With Amagosa, we are a smaller community and our houses are more spread out. So where in Pahrump, your bus route is typically only 30 minutes, ours are an hour long. Bus is have anywhere from 30 to 40 kids usually, but the one that has the longest route and the most kids is 60 kids for 55 minute long bus route from start to finish and there's no air conditioning. My kid has been going to this school, my oldest kid that goes to the school, he's in fourth grade, and he's been going ever since he was in pre-K, and this is the first year I am learning that he does not have air conditioning on his bus. This has been an issue that has been going on for like years. I mean, it's something clearly, I mean, the buses are 20 years old. Most other states replace their buses after like five or 10 years. So obviously we're very behind on getting the buses replaced, but I think the, the bus drivers and like the staff and faculty and stuff, they've just been tolerating it because it's what we've always had. You know, what's the point in fighting if nothing's gonna change, I think has been their mindset. But we're very much of the mindset of small ripples can turn into big waves and we're just hoping to, you know, start some reform, something to get it better. We have three buses that run right now in an activities bus but only one of them has air conditioning and that's the activities bus we already have. Since we've started all of this, they are now allowing us to use that activities bus as a daily driver because it has air conditioning. They did tell us we are getting one brand new bus, but it's not coming until spring of 2023. So us teachers and the principal, we did pull together and we secured some donations from the Honey Farm and Pahrump and the Beatty Lion Club from Beatty and they have donated handheld fans and the cooling neck wraps for our children just as cooling aids to help us 
get these kids a little bit of a relief while they're on the school bus. But these are Band-Aid solutions for a much bigger problem. We have some buses with air conditioning, not all, and we're in the process of replacing our current fleet so that within the next 10 years, hopefully all of our buses will have air conditioning. We live in the desert, so it's definitely needed. However, it's not required by the state of Nevada. They're currently rolling them out based on population and the way we believe it should be done is based off of risk. They should do individual risks assessments of each school. How many students go to that school, how long their bus routes are, what the average temperature is of those areas. And we believe that the buses should be rolled out in that, in that way instead of based off of population. That's causing detriment to Amargosa, to Beatty, to Brown Mountain. Amargosa routes are long. However, there are routes that are just as long in our other areas as well. Um, I think just the most recent heat has caused a lot more attention to go to it and it is definitely way too hot on the buses right now. From here, I have started at the principal's office and we have worked our ladder up all the way to the state superintendent of education. Our goal is to not only provide relief for our students in Amagosa, but try and increase funding for the school districts in all of Nevada because it's not just our town and our county that's suffering. Right now, the way to get involved is we do have a petition, an online petition, and we're hoping that the more signatures we get, the better, because we plan on taking this all the way up to the governor's office. And the more people we have supporting us and they're willing to fight with us and put their name on that petition, the better chances we have of making a change. And if you'd like to sign that petition pushing for air conditioning on local school buses, you can do so online at change.org. Just search for Amargosa Valley to get started. As of today, more than 700 people have signed that petition. Well, Zambelli Fire, who's in charge of our annual Freedom Festival show, also serves other communities across the nation. And the O'Brien crew from Pahrump that consists of a father and son, John and Eddie O'Brien, were in Laughlin recently to perform with their uncle, who's also a pyrotechnic. We caught up with John O'Brien to find out more. Well, basically what we have is a Fire One system. This is being used for a show that we're shooting down in southern Nevada, actually Arizona, in Bullhead City. And uh, this is going to be a 17-minute uh, and 55-second show. And I'm about ready to push fire. So here we go. What it's doing right now is it's firing the shell. And it's going down through the sequences. So it's all computer fired. We have literally hands free. If we have to shut the system down, I can actually disarm any of the modules. If we have a, a, a situation in any one of the individual 34 positions I have. I can shut the module down in a split second, discontinue firing, or I can fire parts of it or whatever. It's a very sophisticated firing system, and it's, it's a great system to have. Uh, we run uh, 45 cables plus and that are 100 to 150 feet long to all the individual stations that we have behind the, the fairgrounds, behind the bleachers. And each one of the uh, modules that we have out here. This is a module and these computerized modules take the signal and this is the actual row it is 29 and uh, we hook up two individual cables to it. There's a digital signal that's sent across as, as well as the power to each one of the modules to fire it. Very, as I said a very sophisticated system and a lot of the major theme parks and uh, uh, shows all across the United States and the world are starting to go to these systems because one, they're safer, two, they're more reliable, and three, we're able to do a lot more uh, uh, easier setups uh, than the traditional pin boards. Well, basically, this particular system is very tried and true, and uh, as far as training, I've been to some major trainings by the corporation that uh, designed the system. And then plus our company also trains us on this. And uh, so far I've fired four years of shows and I've, it's numerous shows uh, with this system. And uh, I really like it. It's, it. It saves us a lot of time. Well, as a national weather spotter, I uh, also have some inside tracks. And then plus we watch the radar down here quite closely. We have three different radar systems that we monitor. And uh, we knew exactly where the storm was as it was coming in. 
We monitored what it was doing and having been down here for 26 years, kind of know the uh, topography and the way that the weather works down here. And when we see it coming off the mountain, we know it's coming. It takes only about three and a half minutes to get here. I have two facilities, actually I had three facilities that I shot shows for down here in this particular area. Uh, I have been down at this casino for 27 and a half years. I shot the very first show when they did the grand opening. And I've been here every show since. And uh, it's just been a tradition down here. Uh, we do three shows or four shows here a year. This is Abbey Casino down here in uh, Fort Mojave. And uh, we do uh, two shows, usually up in Laughlin. Sometimes three shows uh, there at the site up in, 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 over across in the Arizona side, right across from the uh, Laughlin Strip. I'd love to see the show uh, continue in Trump and I'd love to see us expand it to the fairgrounds and uh, look at a bigger future for the show. Your forecast for this last weekend of summer and more news after the break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. And here's a word from one of our sponsors, Spring Mountain Medical, who talks about pain. This Medical Minute is brought to you by Spring Mountain Medical, healthcare the way you've always imagined it. Hi, I'm Peaches from Spring Mountain Medical, your hometown health and wellness provider. Today, I'm going to talk to you about pain. I'll bet you didn't know that pain can be managed without medication. It's a fact that many of my patients come to our practice conditioned to think that masking pain problems is a job for medication alone. The good news is that we have solutions that make medication the last line of treatment. Often, issues related to pain are psychosomatic. An evaluation that starts with an assessment of your mental and emotional outlook could be the key to permanent pain relief. Once we build your proper mindset about your health, we can explore additional treatment options, including proper medication if necessary. If you're suffering from pain in your back, neck, shoulders, or legs, schedule an appointment today. I'm Peaches Duan with Spring Mountain Medical, and this has been your Medical Minute. Thanks, Peaches. Now Josh Osborne is giving us advice about a common issue with our home computers, and that's wireless routers. Hey guys, Josh Osborne here with Brump's own Great Computer Deals. It's time for another quick tutorial. Today's topic, the most common issues we see at our computer repair center and how to avoid them, part four. You think the biggest technology issue facing our customers this day and age would be their lack of computer knowledge, but that's actually not the case at all. You'd be surprised to find that over 50% of the problems that we help people solve are completely avoidable regardless of a customer's computer literacy. Today's topic and issue, wireless connection problems at home. Wireless internet is so hard to live without these days. Everything from banking, modern communication, even watching television requires it. This Wi-Fi convenience would be very tough to use if not for the help of a little friend we call the wireless router. Yet, so many people seem to have issues with theirs. From password problems, the lack of range throughout their house, we've seen it all. And in most cases, these problems are completely avoidable and more importantly, fixable. So, how do we avoid the issues? Well, for starters, when you first have your internet service installed, very important to be involved with the technician doing the work. Make sure that router that you're providing you is sufficient for your needs and more importantly, your house size. Sometimes the model of router they rent to you is fairly low end and doesn't really offer really good coverage. It is your right to be able to purchase a better router on your own and have that same technician install it for you. This will also save you that monthly charge that they add to your bill for renting their cheaper router. Be sure to ask them to install the device in a central location of your home so that every single room gets a balanced signal for wireless internet access. The last important thing to know is your router's Wi-Fi name and password. These details will be very important to getting your various devices connected to the internet. Computers, smart TVs, tablets, wireless printers, 
Make sure to log those credentials in several locations and possibly even on a sticky note attached to the router itself. Still need help? Come on down to our store. We're located at 1190 East Highway 372 across the street from Pizza Hut and in the same plaza as Game Corner Arcade and Fun Center. Or just give us a call, 775-990-8833. We're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 3. Anyway, that's it for today's lesson. I will catch you guys on the next one. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Beautiful. Beautiful skies out there today. Nice. Let's enjoy it. Can you believe fall starts a week from today? But we'll take a closer look at the weather right around the corner when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Good evening, Nevada. Romano Frediani here in for John Kohler from the KPVM TV Weather Studios with your Thursday weather map that continues this wonderful week of fall weather we've been having. Weather twins up in Fernley and Fallon both checking in at 80 degrees. Carson City saw 78, and our cool spot in the state was Tonopah with 73 degrees, followed closely by Goldfield at 74. Beatty saw 84 degrees today, and we got weather twins down south as well as both Amargosa and Las Vegas check in at 90 degrees, with Las Vegas taking the over-under with a 67-degree low for this evening. Death Valley still hitting that century mark, 100 degrees, but here in the playground of Pahrump, we are currently at 86 degrees, it was 88 just a little bit earlier. Winds out of the south to 12 miles an hour, humidity at 19%, and the sun rose this morning at 626. It'll set this evening at 651. Humidity will ratchet up to about 30% with winds out of the east-southeast to 8 miles an hour. Our low tonight will be 62 degrees, and how does that set us up for the rest of the week? Well... Lots of sunshine, sun, very few clouds, maybe a little cloud cover on Wednesday. Wind, uh, windy weekend on Saturday and Sunday, we have winds above 15 miles an hour. 90 degrees on Friday, but for the rest of the week, it seems that they're going to be in the mid 80s and the lows are going to be in the low 60s, as opposed to Tuesday, which will ratchet down to about 58 degrees. And uh, make sure you're covered up that night. Looks like harvest time is coming. Sharpen your scythes. All right. Have a great night. Back to Deanna. You know, awesome report, Romano. Well, you know, we had that crash that was reported there on Mans Road, but then they upgraded it to Cass Road. That's right. And, you know, I, I want to tell everybody, it's so interesting. Of course, we have so many people that know about the history of the Prump Valley here in town. But Cass Road is actually um, an acronym for uh, Christensen Aerial Application Service. The Christensen family owns that area down there, and they actually have a runway for their airplanes, and uh, Hans Christensen still lives down there. It's um, That actually stands for um, that acronym, and it's because he was a crop duster. Wow. And so when you see that C-A-A-S, that's Makes what that sense. stands for, Christensen Aerial Application Service. And we got that all from Roy Mankins, and Roy Mankins just knows everything yes. about the town. Thank One day we're going to have a little history segment Love on the news. Facts. That's yes, right. All right, well, All right. that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unit Gentry. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night.